numerous acts of violence, robberies, general mayhem, and even a few cases of bona fide terrorism have been completely shut down by an unexpected complication to the nefarious schemes of incompetent ne'er-do-wells, the presence of a U.S. military veteran. Yes, veterans, and not to ignore active duty service members, have made the news again and again for gallant acts of bravery and self-sacrifice to the profound fortune of all those around them, and the incredible bad luck of anyone who thought they were about to have an easy day of villainy. In today's episode, we'll be calling out seven heroic acts of men out of uniform who found themselves at the wrong place at the right time. It's seven times Hero Vets Save the Day here on The World of The three-man team, which included two U.S. military members who stopped a European terrorist attack in the middle of their vacation, probably deserve a nod on this list. Okay, so imagine you're just having a nice, relaxing three-day weekend with your boys. One of your bros says, Hey, we should go on a casual sightseeing tour. Another says, We should take the train. And you reply, How whimsical. What could ever go wrong? Now imagine you're a fanatical Islamic terrorist recruited by the Islamic State to sow chaos and mayhem across the European continent. You decide the place that you want to go down is on a train because reasons. That's exactly what happened to two active duty servicemen, recent Afghanistan veteran National Guard Specialist Alex Scarlatos and Airman First Class Spencer Stone, along with their civilian friend Anthony Sadler. They were met by Ayub El Khazani in the throes of Allah Akbaring himself. The three men were en route to Paris as part of a sightseeing vacation. El Kazani entered car number 12 armed with an AKM rifle, a pistol, nearly 300 rounds of ammunition, and also a box cutter. After El Kazani opened fire on the train, Stone and Scarlatos jumped into action literally by tackling him to the ground. The Americans wrestled him to the ground after he opened fire and pulled, of all things, the box cutter. After the three beat the crap out of him, they hogtied the inept terrorist and became international celebrities. Stone received injuries during the fight between the Moroccan-born gunmen, while Scarlatost added, he had clearly no firearms training whatsoever. In spite of his ineptitude, no one is faulting the military men for the assailants' incompetence. The three received international praise for stopping nothing less than a full-on terrorist gunman completely unarmed. The men received a phone call of appreciation from President Obama, which was won up by French President Francois Hollande, who presented them with the country's highest award for gallantry, the Legion d'Honneur. The two were also awarded the Guy's Choice Award by Spike TV, and Scarlatos was even invited to Dancing with the Stars, where he was rewarded with this. Whatever, bro. You earned it. Their story was recorded in the memoir, The 1517 to Paris, which became a major Hollywood production directed and produced by Clint Eastwood, and even starring Spencer Sadler and Scarlatos themselves. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter praised the two for their heroism and statement. Airman Stone and Specialist Alex Scarlatos are two reasons why, on duty or off, ours is the finest fighting force the world has ever known. Way to botch that one, terrorists. It was just an unassuming night in November 2014 when Andrew Myers noticed a man trying to enter a basement in his neighborhood. Sensing mischievousness afoot, Myers asked the man, Hey, what's up? I live here, said the hooded figure. You definitely do not live here, Myers replied. Then the robber asked Myers who he was, to which he responded, I do live here, buddy. A better question the attempted burglar might have asked was, Hey, you wouldn't happen to be a former U.S. Army paratrooper, would you? That would have been smart since Myers was prepared for exactly this encounter. It was actually the second time the burglar had made such an attempt, evidenced by a break-in Myers and his girlfriend experienced earlier in the week when no one was home. This unwanted entrance prompted the couple to install an outside security camera and other defensive measures to the house. When the robber returned, Myers made sure that the incident was filmed, and film it he did. Myers captured not only the attempted entry, but also the culprit's beatdown and even his arrest, all of which Myers then uploaded to his personal YouTube to the backdrop of delightful reggae tunes. In all honesty, the incompetent criminal got off easy. 
Myers and his girlfriend had joked about setting up Home Alone style traps all over the basement. Since most infantry types I know consider the Claymore mine to be an essential element to any booby trap setup, I'd say that just getting your face punched in by an army paratrooper and humiliated on the internet, a much more preferable alternative. In October 2014, 23-year-old John Zachary Desjardins was apparently expecting an easy payday. In the parking lot of a Winn-Dixie, Desjardins attempted to rob a 76-year-old woman. I say attempted because of the beatdown he suffered from Navy veteran Kendrick Taylor. Taylor was on his way to the gym when he saw Desjardins assaulting an elderly woman. In spite of numerous bystanders doing nothing, Taylor charged across the lot to fight the man off. After being confronted by Taylor, Desjardins took off, but Taylor ran after him, tackling him to the ground and holding him down until police arrived. What if that was my grandmother? She was screaming for help, and that's when I went over to help her. When I looked down, I didn't know if he had a knife or a gun, but I just, I just saw the lady. She was so old, and when he threw her down, she was so fragile, and I knew she needed help. When I got my hands on him, I just uh, apprehended him, and, and I told some uh, local people to call the police, and so the, they got here, and I kept him down. Once Taylor handed off the hoodlum to the police, he went to the gym, since, you know, superhero antics are the sort of thing that just happens to some people every day but not unless you get your flex on. Later, he was able to meet with the elderly woman to see that she was shaken and suffering from some minor injuries, but said that she was blessed to have Taylor's intervention. Okay, spoiler alert. Not every story has a happy ending and y'all gonna be mad at this one. In York County, Virginia, an auto zone was robbed for the second time in 30 days by the same guy. Known as the fake beard bandit, this one person was believed to be responsible for sticking up more than 30 different establishments in the city. The second time he made his way into the same auto zone, he pulled his gun and demanded cash from the store's employees. One of those employees was Air Force veteran Devin McLean. When the bandit started to rob the store, McLean went to his vehicle, where he stored his own weapon. He went back into the store and sent the robber running. A grateful store manager thanked McLean for saving his life. The store is safe. The bad guy chased away and probably has a little notation in his diary of dastardly deeds not to go to the auto zone with a crazy gun owning guy who is tired of his shenanigans. In a perfect world, the story would have ended there, but it doesn't. How does auto zone thank you, Mr. McLean? The next day he was fired. According to McLean, upon his arrival the following morning, he was sent packing. Apparently he violated the chain's zero gun policy when he brought the weapon into the establishment, you know, to save everyone from the other guy with the gun. I, 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 I guess that the fake beer bandit was simply unaware of the chain zero gun policy, which was, which is why he, he robbed the store in the first place. Local Sheriff JD Diggs made the comment. I mean, two people with guns, no shots fired and a robbery averted is a good thing. I thought, what a shame, this guy has really gone above and beyond. I mean, what else can you ask an employee to do for you? Sheriff Diggs was joined by hundreds of citizens in voicing their support for McLean, insisting that AutoZone review their policy, or at the very least make an exception for the Air Force vet. They didn't. He's still fired. I'm, I'm just going to be honest, my spidey sense tells me there's a little bit more to this story, but I think that's enough of the story to go on to let my friends down at AutoZone corporate headquarters know, eh, I'll go to O'Reilly's. Florida Staff Sergeant Eddie Peoples wasn't expecting much when he and his two sons entered a local bank while on leave in June of 2011. He certainly wasn't expecting 34-year-old Matthew Rogers to walk into the place with a gun and a plan to rob it. During the robbery, video footage shows people shielding his two boys, first by moving chairs as cover and concealment for them before moving in front of the children himself in the event Rogers opened fire. Seeing the two boys, Rogers allegedly threatened everyone in the bank, if anyone tries anything, the kitty gets it. As you shall see, that was a mistake directed towards the 11-year soldier and veteran of the Iraq War. Once people saw Rogers leave the bank and knowing that his kids were safe, the staff sergeant followed the robber. Peoples got into his car and chased him down, preventing the assailant from fleeing. After Rogers attempted to threaten Peoples by putting the gun to his face, Peoples disarmed the assailant before putting him to the ground. When he returned to the bank, his son asked his dad, Daddy, did you get the bad man? To which Peoples replied, Yeah, I got the bad man. Okay, I just gotta say some things about Eddie Peoples. Besides the fact that he's gotta have, like, the coolest name on Earth, you know, like, 
we, we got to talk about decisions. Okay, if, if you're just out there thinking, what are some bad decisions I could make? One, don't don't go robbing banks. That, that's, that, that's the first bad decision that this guy made. Don't go robbing banks. Two, if, if you do decide that robbing a bank is just the mistake you're going to make today, don't be that guy who goes in and starts pointing guns at little kids and saying, anybody who tries anything, the kiddies are going to get it. Any dude is dangerous if you do that to their kids. But three, if you are going to do that to some dude with his kids at a bank that you should not be robbing, you should at least know that it could be a guy who just got back from Iraq. <laughs> okay? It could be that guy. It's like, I get it. You know, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to prepare for that third one. You know, you never really know... Who's a military veteran who's gonna do a Muay Thai lock on you the moment you try to do something stupid? You know, it's like, like, anybody could be that veteran. But you know, if you just avoid choice one, and then you avoid choice two, you might not have to ever worry about any peoples. And you know what? Like, th th this was just a really bad set of choices. And, and, and any peoples? Any Peoples is the consequence of bad choices of dumb people. <laughs> oh, stupid. Mintz is a former U.S. Army Infantry M240 gunner, and the story of his road to becoming a hero is one of the most interesting on this list. As a soldier, I'm just going to be honest, he kind of sucked. After an injury that sidelined him out of combat deployment with the 5th Battalion 20th Infantry Regiment, Mintz sought self-prescribed medication from a local drug dealer. That was the first in a series of bad choices finally culminating in time in the brig and an other than honorable discharge following a guilty plea for going AWOL for more than two weeks. If this was the end of Mintz's story, it would be yet another unfortunate tale of yet another failed soldier. But fate wasn't through with Mintz yet. Mintz became national news when his college, the Umqua Community College of Roseburg, Oregon, was attacked by a mass shooter. Chris said he fell back on his training as an M240 gunner, preparing for a deployment that never happened. The long dormant infantry training jump-started my brain, he said in the Stars and Stripes interview. After escaping, according to eyewitnesses, Chris went back into the building's library, where students were still hiding. He directed the cowering students to escape via an emergency exit and set off the fire alarms. Then outside the classroom where the shooter was killing his last victims, Mintz ran at the attacker and blocked a door to a classroom in the attempt to protect fellow classmates. While attempting to stop the shooter, Mintz was shot an incredible five times. He was rushed to surgery, but required a great deal of recuperative care. To repay his heroism, a GoFundMe was set up by his cousin for $10,000 to go towards his medical expenses, because this wasn't exactly going to be covered by the VA. After details of Mint's story began to surface, an army of supporters blew the top off the original $10,000 goal. His GoFundMe earned over $800,000 in a matter of months. That's why Chris Mintz, while being one of the most unlikely of servicemen to have been expected to become famous for any valiant act of heroism, turned out to be exactly the hero one small college needed. Fully atoning for his foolishness in the past, his character and what the army gave him made him a hero at a time he never expected. Earl Jones is not your average 92-year-old. He is a veteran of the Second World War and doesn't like being woken up. He especially doesn't like being woken up by the sound of intruders entering his basement at zero dark 30. To most of you, that means the time of the night when nothing legal is happening. Hearing the sound of footsteps, Jones grabbed his 22 caliber rifle and, by my understanding, set up an ambush on the door to his basement. When 24-year-old Lloyd Maxwell and two other burglars allegedly kicked in the door from the basement into his house, one was greeted with a well-aimed shot to the chest by a guy who has been hardcore since our dads were in diapers. Maxwell was later found dead by police with the two other assailants who had grabbed his body and fled the scene. And when he stepped up, he was fully exposed, clothing and all. And I said, well, that's far enough. He kicked the door off the hinges and he's full exposed, exposed, and that's when I shot him. In an interview with CBS, Jones had this to say, I aimed right for his heart. I didn't go to war for nothing. I have the right to carry a gun. Jones said he also had no fear as he waited for the intruder. Was I scared? Was I mad? Hell, no. It was simple. The man was going to take my life. He was hunting me. I was protecting myself. 
One interviewer also questioned him on why he didn't call the police. Some people wonder why you didn't dial 911. Why? I'm a military man now. I ain't gonna dial somebody. I have to wait for an hour. The damn guy shoot me in the face and gone or what that kind of stuff. If I hadn't shot him, he'd have been in here attacking me or whatever, you know. That's seconds. That isn't no damn hours, you know. Old man, you've made me personally reevaluate every one of my many manly achievements. I'm just going to say this, World War II veterans make all the rest of us look like pansies. Besides being an awesome and terrifying old man, Earl Jones sums up what heroism is about. It's seconds. It isn't hours or even minutes. I personally support our police and am thankful for everything they do to keep us safe on a daily basis. At their best, though, it may take several minutes to respond to the scene of a crime. A generation of veterans are showing that security can't always be waited on but sometimes revolves around individual initiative, courage, and the capabilities of those who are willing to exercise extreme prejudice towards the kinds of non-compliance to the public welfare that bad guys often exude. When news of terrorist attacks, school shootings, or just your everyday old-fashioned muggings, burglary, and vandalism becomes a new norm, it becomes more and more apparent that people who are willing and able to act in the moment are what is needed to ensure a level of safety. We call it heroism when it happens, but in reality, it's just knowing what needs to be done and doing it. Heroism isn't about people who go out looking for trouble. Heroes are those who, in the time of challenging, accept a certain degree of risk to protect others and to serve the general public. Sometimes, when these acts are caused by other people, heroism comes in the form of those who are in the wrong place and time, but willing to put forth just enough violence to make life livable for the rest of us. That's why being a veteran still means something. Men like these show how all veterans and active duty military personnel remain valuable to society even when not on duty, as well as long after they hang their discharge papers on the wall. The core values of military service, along with the skills many pick up along the way, are assets we take with us far beyond the battlefield and at times when our service is least expected. Despite these truths, veterans still struggle to find a place for themselves in the nation they gave up so much for. They have been negatively stereotyped as dangerous and denied work opportunities for fears that they are at some higher risk of mass shooting or to have a psychotic breakdown than their civilian counterparts. This is in spite of studies showing that veterans are less likely to commit crimes than civilians otherwise identical to them in all demographic regards, and that even the mere presence of military veterans in places of work and social gatherings reduces crime and the potential for violence. These seven stories of the unexpected heroism of unassuming military men along with hundreds of others I hope to share in the future, demonstrate why. They also demonstrate why America's veteran community, those millions of men and women you unknowingly pass every day, remain one of our nation's greatest treasures. As the Marines say, there's no greater friend and no worse enemy. Thanks for watching this War Elephant salute to our veterans. I hope to do more videos like this honoring the unexpected heroism of men like these. If you know a story you'd like shared in future videos, let me know down at the bottom. And if there's anything else you'd like to see profiled in future episodes, make a request for that too. The top voted request might make it to a new video. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube for more, as well as to share with all your veteran friends. And don't forget that the War Elephant is supported by fan donations, so if you want to see more content like this and help improve the channel, visit the Patreon link to find out how below. Once again, thanks for watching. Simplify and God bless. War Elephant out.